Padme Amidala's life is in danger. Traveling in disguise to trick her enemies, she arrives on Coruscant to help prevent the Republic from splitting apart. Many planets want to leave the Republic to join Count Dooku, a mysterious... Starship is blown to pieces by an assassin's hidden bomb. She realizes that her enemies will do anything to stop her.
Padme Amidala's life is in danger. Padme tells the Jedi Council that she suspects Count Dooku of destroying her ship. Jedi Padme tells the Jedi... That night, while Padme sleeps in her high-rise apartment, an assassin droid silently hovers outside. It cuts a hole in the window, allowing two poisonous insects to slither in. Luckily, using the Force, the Jedi can sense trouble. Anakin runs into the room, swinging his lightsaber and cuts both insects in half. Obi-Wan then jumps out of the window, crashing through the glass to grab hold of the assassin droid. It zooms away, taking Obi-Wan thousands of feet up in the air. Obi-Wan clings to the flying assassin droid while Anakin follows in an airspeeder. Soaring between the skyscrapers, the droid leads them to a masked assassin. Before they can grab the mysterious stranger, she jumps into her own airspeeder and takes off, starting a high-speed chase through the crowded sky lanes. As Anakin and Obi-Wan pursue her through the city, they realize that she is a shape-shifting alien who can make her face look like anyone she wants. The chase ends in a crash landing, but the Jedi are soon able to corner the assassin in a crowded nightclub. Outside the nightclub, the alien admits that a bounty hunter had hired her to destroy Padme. But before she can say the bounty hunter's name, a toxic dart flies into her neck, killing her instantly. The Jedi look up to see an armored man using a jetpack to escape. Obi-Wan soon learns that the deadly dart was made by cloners on Kamino, a mysterious planet far beyond the galaxy's outer rim. Obi-Wan is surprised to discover that the star charts in the Jedi Temple have no record of Kamino. He asks for help from Master Yoda and his class of Jedi younglings. One student suggests that someone has erased the Kamino star system from the Temple's records. So Obi-Wan jumps into a Jedi Starfighter and blasts off to Kamino. On this watery, stormy world, the Jedi Knight meets a group of aliens who know how to clone one soldier into thousands of soldiers. Strangely, the cloners are expecting a Jedi visitor. 
They tell Obi-Wan that 10 years earlier, a Jedi had paid them to create a clone army for the Republic. They also tell Obi-Wan that the clones are replicas of a bounty hunter named Jango Fett, who lives at the factory with his clone son, Boba. When Obi-Wan meets Jango Fett, he realizes that Fett is the same bounty hunter who destroyed the shape-shifting alien on Coruscant. Obi-Wan contacts the Jedi Council to tell them about Jango Fett and the clone army. While Obi-Wan searches for more clues on Kamino, Anakin and Padme take refuge on a remote island on Naboo. Anakin is unable to hide his emotions, and he tells Padme that he loves her. But Padme reminds Anakin that Jedi are forbidden to marry, and that her work in the Senate is more important than their feelings for each other. Their peaceful visit to Naboo ends when Anakin has nightmare visions of his mother in great pain on his own homeworld, the desert planet Tatooine. Certain that she needs help, Anakin and Padme race to save her. Meanwhile, Jango and Boba Fett have decided to run away. Obi-Wan tries to stop them, 
but the bounty hunter is a strong warrior. He and the Jedi have a fierce fight, but Jango escapes with his son in their starfighter, Slave One. Just before they blast off, Obi-Wan throws a magnetic tracking device onto the ship. He then jumps into his own starfighter and follows the bounty hunter into hyperspace. Slave One emerges from hyperspace, and Jango sees that the Jedi is close behind. The bounty hunter takes shelter in an asteroid belt and fires his ship's powerful weapons at Obi-Wan's starfighter. Jango thinks a massive explosion has killed Obi-Wan, but the Jedi has evaded the deadly bomb. He secretly follows Jango to the planet G. Back on Tatooine, Anakin is reunited with C-3PO, the protocol droid he built when he was a boy. Anakin also learns that his mother has married Klee Lars, a moisture farmer. He tells Anakin terrible news. A hunting party of dangerous Tusken Raiders has abducted Anakin's mother, Shmi. Klee believes she must be dead. Anakin senses that his mother is still alive, yet in great pain. So Anakin jumps on a speeder bike and soars across the desert to save her, traveling all day and all night. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan is hiding in a rocky fortress tower, where he overhears Count Dooku telling a group of greedy creatures that he wants their help in the war against the Republic. Obi-Wan also learns that the Trade Federation is behind the attempts to destroy Padme. He quickly returns to his starfighter to send an emergency transmission to the Jedi Council. Anakin has found the hidden camp of the savage Tusken Raiders. There, he finds his gravely wounded mother. Anakin tries to save her, but she dies in his arms. Overwhelmed by anger, Anakin forgets his Jedi training and uses his lightsaber to take revenge on every Tuscan in the camp. He then brings his mother's body back to the family moisture farm so he can bury her. When Anakin confesses to Padme that he could not stop himself from destroying the Tuscans, he breaks down and cries as she consoles him. He knows that what he did was terribly wrong. By the time Obi-Wan's transmission reaches Anakin and the Jedi Council, he has been captured by destroyer droids. The Jedi Council and the Republic want to take action against Count Dooku and his droid army, so they activate the Clone Army. Meanwhile, 
Anakin and Padme blast into space with R2-D2 and C-3PO on a rescue mission to save Obi-Wan before it's too late. After landing on Geonosis, Anakin and Padme make their way into a sinister droid factory where they're attacked by flying Geonosians and thrown into a dangerous struggle with the factory's deadly machinery. They're soon overwhelmed, surrounded, and taken prisoner by Jango Fett and the winged Geonosians. As they await their fate at the hands of Count Dooku, Padme realizes that her life may soon be over. She turns to Anakin and tells him that she too loves him truly and deeply. In a giant arena, thousands of Geonosians eagerly await the execution of Anakin, Padme, and Obi-Wan, who are led in and chained to tall columns. Before the reunited friends can make a plan, three savage monsters are released into the arena. Dooku, Jango Fett, and the cheering Geonosians watch the monsters try to destroy the captives, who struggle to stay alive. They're still fighting the beasts when, in the nick of time, a stern Mace Windu arrives with a Jedi rescue team. Dooku is not surprised by the arrival of Mace Windu. Upon Dooku's command, super battle droids march into the arena and open fire on the Jedi. Mace jumps into the arena to help, so Jango Fett jumps in after him and tries to blast the Jedi. Mace easily deflects the blast, however, and then swings his lightsaber, cutting down the bounty hunter. Still, the Jedi Knights are outnumbered by hundreds of droids, and many Jedi fall to the dust, beaten. The battle droids are about to finish off Anakin, Padme, and Obi-Wan when Republic gunships filled with clone troopers fly into the arena. Yoda leads the battle as they blast the super battle droids into smithereens.
the Battle of Geonosis spills out from the arena onto the surrounding rocky ground as clone troopers charge at the droid army. Hail fire droids shoot missiles at the troopers and spider droids blast away. Many troopers are blown up, but still more keep coming, firing their blasters through the thick smoke. Seeing that the clone troopers cannot be stopped, evil Count Dooku escapes with the designs for a secret super weapon, an immense moon-sized battle station. While Republic assault ships gain the upper hand, led by Mace Windu and Yoda, Obi-Wan and Anakin fly after Dooku, who leads them to a secret hangar. Count Dooku is strong with the dark side of the Force. Master Yoda. If Anakin and Obi-Wan are going to defeat him, Master they must Yoda. act together. Count but Anakin Dooku. recklessly strikes first. Smiling, Dooku unleashes deadly Force lightning on poor Anakin, who falls to the ground. Dooku then attacks Obi-Wan. He knocks Obi-Wan out and is about to kill him when Anakin recovers and leaps Master back Yoda. into the battle. Anakin fights fiercely, Count but Count Dooku. Dooku cuts off his hand. Dooku thinks he's victorious when Master Yoda arrives. Centuries old, he's not fought in many years, but with the Force as his ally, Yoda attacks with his lightsaber to defend the wounded Jedi. Master Yoda. Dooku knows that he's no match for Yoda, so he flees to his Solar Sailor starship. <laughs> After Anakin is given a new mechanical hand, he and Padme are secretly married on Naboo. Back in his hideout on Coruscant, the Sith Lord Count Dooku delivers the designs for the secret superweapon to his master, the evil Darth Sidious. Obi-Wan and the Jedi Council have no idea what the Sith will do next, but Yoda is certain of one thing. The dark side has become powerful, and the Clone Wars have begun.